you're going to take the end of your yarn, scooch this over, place the tail along your palm. I usually leave a little extra length so then I can weave my tail in with my yarn needle. Um, if you make it too short, then there won't be enough to put your needle on to weave in your ends. So take it, take your tail, place it on your palm. And what I do is I do my two fingers, I wrap it around once. See how there's an X there? I put my thumb on my X and I go in through here, through the loop, and grab the working yarn. And then I pull both and I pull tight. Let me show you one more time. Wrap around, go in and pull. And then what I do is I turn. So my working yarn is now on my left because I'm a right-handed crocheter. My tail is on my right. And I slip my hook in the loop from this way. And then I pull. Now what this does is a slip stitch is meant to move. It's meant to unpull. So you can unpull it. So when you make your slip stitch, you always want to make sure that the moving yarn, see how that part right there is the moving yarn? The moving part of the yarn is the working yarn. You don't want your tail to move. You want your working yarn to move. And why is that important? When we make um, stitches, let me make a couple, now the moving yarn is locked with the stitches. If this were to move, if the tail would have been the moving yarn, then you would be able to pull on this and it would start t tightening up your stitches. And so now you can pull on this all day long and all it's going to do is tightening up that knot so you make sure your work won't ever unravel. Show you one more time. Take your tail, wrap it around two fingers, and I stick my finger in there and I grab this yarn and then I pull it tight and then I turn it and there's my there's my moving yarn. My moving yarn is the top here. And that's it.